Sometimes you really would like to hear what God has to say, but the message just isn't getting through. Today, you'll discover how the Word can come alive in your hands. It has stood the test of time. God's book, the Bible, still relevant in today's complex world. It is written, sharing hope around the globe. Hey. Kids are making you crazy yet? Yeah? They're fun. Hmm. They keep me on my toes in Bible class. Questions they pull out of their head. <sighs> We're supposed to teach these kids values, and it's forced me to do some thinking. Can't keep living off what I learned in church as a kid forever. And I pick up a Bible, but it's like it's been sitting on the shelf forever. And I try to get into it, but it's like it's coming from so far away. I just wish it would ring a bell or something. You can't communicate what you don't have. And I just wish I could sense God's voice. All these people talking about revelations, learning great things, and I'm just plodding through the verses. I don't know, there's got to be more to it than that. I want more is the heart cry of many people today. I'm sure there have been times when you've longed to yell that out, times when you're frustrated, times when the same old routine just isn't good enough. You're gripped by the thought, there's just got to be more to life than this. Yes, the cry of many hearts today is, I want more. A lot of people try to exploit those longings, of course. We're told over and over that a new sports car, a holiday house by the beach, or a Maya gift certificate will make us happy. We deserve the very best. That's the message commercials keep sending out in various ways. We deserve more. And this new gadget or that dream house in the suburbs is just the more we need. But after a while, almost all of us realize that cars and gift certificates take us only so far. They're life's accessories. They don't give us that much more. We still have the same deep longings. After a while, almost all of us realize the more we need has to do with the heart. It has to do with things inside. It has to do with the spirit. We need more good stuff inside of us if we're ever going to be satisfied. We need more spiritually. And that's what we're going to focus on in this series. We're going to look at how people get more when they're hungry inside. How people get more when they're trying to find answers. We're going to discover how to get more out of the Bible, how to get more out of prayer, and how to get more out of God's guidance. And finally, how to get more out of ourselves. Today, we'll start with the Bible. It's been around for a long time, of course. It claims to be the Word of God. Millions have testified that it's changed their lives. But what if it hasn't changed yours? Maybe you've just never been able to get into the Bible. It doesn't quite speak your language. Maybe you've tried to read it and found it hard to appreciate or understand. It's hard to pick up from the coffee table. Or perhaps you've been a student of the Word for some time, but now you realize it doesn't inspire you like it once did. You've heard it all before. It's the same old story. If the Bible is really the living Word of God, how does it come alive in our hands? How does it inspire us? How do we really get more out of it? Let's zero in on some practical tips. Here's how you really get more out of the Bible. Now, our suggestions are going to center around one thing, one fact about the Bible. It's a creative word. Let's take a look at Psalm chapter 33 and verses 6 and 9. David describes the Bible as the creative word. He does it in these words. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. There you have it. God speaking is not the same as you or me speaking. He creates something out of nothing. What was never so becomes so if God says so. God's words are creative in that sense. They have the energy to become things. And what this means is that to get more out of the Bible, we need to tap into this creative power. 
We need to find ways to unleash the word that called worlds into existence. So here's my first suggestion. Find a Bible translation that speaks your language, that speaks the language of your heart. God's word isn't limited to any one style of speaking. It's richer than that. It's more creative than that. Do you realize that there are a wealth of Bible translations to choose from? You can have the majestic historic language of the King James Version, or you can have the freshest paraphrase, something in today's vernacular like the Message Bible. You can also find study Bibles and life application Bibles. In my own personal devotional study, I read from a variety of translations. And it's amazing to me how those different translations speak to my heart. Just find something that speaks your language. You don't want to get stuck in someone else's. That makes God's creative word harder to hear. You want to hear God's word spoken personally to you. I remember as a kid trying to read the entire Bible. It was my rite of passage. But I always got stuck in Leviticus, just lost all of my momentum there. And we were given this exercise in hearing the word, really taking it in and observing it, you know? so carefully that, that we could actually paint the scene. And then, yeah, suddenly, he was talking to me. I mean, it wasn't like I saw some great flash of light or anything, but it's just because I took the time to look carefully. I sat there and I took in the scene, just let it sink in. And that's when the Bible became mine. That's when the Bible really became mine. Here's our second suggestion. Find the time of the day when you're most creative. When do you have brainstorms? When does your mind race? Are you a morning person or are you most alert at night? Read the Bible at your best time of the day. Reading scripture isn't just a relaxation exercise. It's a stimulation exercise. God's creative word wants to make things happen inside of you and around you. So give it space. Give it the best space in your day when your heart and mind are most receptive. Listen to this testimony the prophet Isaiah gives us in chapter 50 and verses 4 and 5. The Lord awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. The Lord God has opened my ear. Here is a man who has discovered the time when he can really take things in. He's really listening to God's creative word. He's becoming a true disciple. Okay, think about how much time you spend in the gym or how much time you spend listening to those negotiating tapes. Well, isn't making that same connection with God worth the investment? Yeah, but when I work out consistently, I see results in just a few weeks. But with spiritual stuff, it's so easy. One step at a time. One step at a time, that's it. Okay, so what you're saying is I've been putting in time to see if something happens when I should have been putting in time until something happens. Bingo. Okay, well, I guess I can get up a little earlier in the mornings. Works for me. So where's a good place to start? You know, where can I get in really deep? Well, how about the Gospels? The Gospels? Yeah, Luke or Mark. Okay, Luke or Mark. Okay, suggestion number three. In order to get more out of God's Word, visualize it. Imagine your way into the story. Let's say you come across the account of Jesus and the storm in Mark chapter 4. Well, picture the clouds rolling overhead. Picture the waves beating against Christ's small fishing boat. See the fear building on the disciples' faces. Can you hear the dull roar of the wind? Can you feel the spray of the waves on your face? Can you see the heavens darkening? Can you feel the sickening thud of the boat dropping between the waves? Visualize what's happening and then visualize the incredible calm that takes over the scene after Jesus utters a few words. That takes you closer to the miracle. It gives you a sense of God coming close. His creative word echoes more deeply. Visualize the word. Taste and touch. Hear and see what's happening. Remember, these are not just old words on a page. They can come alive in your heart. 
The scene can play out all over again in your life. Listen to this admonition from the Apostle Paul, the admonition that he gives in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. The word will dwell in you richly in all its color and texture and wisdom when you visualize, when you get into the scene. So meet God's creative word with a little creative imagination. Amber! Amber, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I was thinking about Jesus washing his disciples' feet. I mean, everybody knows that story, right? Yeah, I hope so. Well, this time, I slowed down and I really pictured the scene. I mean, all those muddy toes lined up and Jesus with a towel draped over his knee. And it hit me. This could change everything, this one act. I mean, imagine all the world's leaders washing each other's feet, humbling themselves like that in front of their spouses or kids or whoever. I mean, there's so much wisdom in that act. I mean, you just have to picture yourself in those scenes and those old stories pop up as if for the first time. See, that's exactly what I was talking about. Here's suggestion number four. If the word is creative, it needs to be expressed. So express it in some way. Experiment with it. Try out its principles claim its promises. The Bible comes alive when we actually use it. Here's how you can begin. Here are some examples of expressing the Word. Combine reading the Bible with praying. Often I open the Bible, particularly the Psalms or the Gospels, and I read the Bible, think about what I've read, and then talk that Word back to God. Make it a dialogue between you and God. Thank Him for the good news you discover. Express admiration for the great qualities you see fleshed out. Ask God questions about what perplexes you in the Bible. Ask Him to help you apply a principle that you can learn. That's how you can begin expressing the Word. Here's something else you can try. Paraphrase a psalm back to God. Just pick a psalm of praise from the Old Testament, read it through, and then put these praises in your own words. Relate them to your own life to the things that you're thankful for. Pretty soon, you have your own psalm lifted up to God. That's a wonderful way to respond to God's creative word. Oh, hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, Amber, I'm, I'm starting to talk back. The Bible really aims your prayers for you and uh, it just shows you what God's dying to do for you. Just having that in mind has completely changed my attitude. It's like a breath of fresh air. Because when I start that way out, like when I start the day off like that, it's... It's, it's just... amazing. You're fuller. Perhaps the most important way we can express the word is to express it in action. Listen to these words of advice given in the epistle of James, chapter 1 and verse 22. James puts it this way, and he puts it powerfully. He says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Don't just hear and smile and forget, James says. Do the word. Put it into practice in your life. Express it in action. That will bring you great blessing in all that you do. Now, here's our final suggestion to make the Bible come alive. Share it. Share what you're learning with someone. Don't just keep everything inside. Find a sharing partner. You know, talking clears things up. That's true in so many ways. It's true of what we learn from the Word of God. Explaining it to someone else clarifies the message. It reinforces the message. Having a sharing partner will also provide you with very useful feedback. The other person can help you figure out if you're on track, if you're applying the Word in a healthy way if your discoveries make sense. You know what surprised me most is that you can keep learning if you keep listening. It happens all the time, you do make discoveries. Jeremy, it's all about quality time, yeah? Yeah, you've really helped open up the word for me. I and mean, thanks for hanging in there when I was so down on it. And now having someone to share it with, well, it just helps it sink in even more. You know, I've noticed that too, just the more I talk about what I've read, just it really reinforces it for me. Yeah, well, let's not stop. OK, well, let's call each other up. Yeah, like, what did you learn today? Exactly, and then I'll ask you. All right. OK, well, 
Have a good day and we'll see you tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, you too. Talk about scripture. It'll make a real difference in your life. That will give the creative word all the more room to expand. The Apostle John gives us a wonderful example of that. We find it in the beginning of his first epistle in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 and 3. That which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon with our hands and handled concerning the word of life, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Talk about what you've seen. Talk about what you're experiencing in the Word of Life. That deepens our fellowship with Christ and it can deepen all of our relationships. It unleashes the creative juices. It opens more of our lives to the Word. Are you aware of the fact that many physicians and psychiatrists are now sharing the Word, talking about the Word in therapy? Dr. William Wilson, a professor of psychiatry at Duke University, was once an agnostic. But one night, camping out under the stars in northern Canada, he was overwhelmed by the sense that life just can't be a cosmic accident. According to Dr. Wilson's own testimony, he said that there under the stars, he came to the conclusion that there must be a creator behind the magnificent movement in the heavens. That led Dr. Wilson to a very personal study of the Bible. And this man discovered principles that transformed his very own life. He was so excited about what he was learning, in fact, that he began using these principles with some of the toughest psychiatric cases, with people whose lives had been torn apart. Well, Dr. Wilson began to see results, remarkable results. In fact, the principles of the Bible were dramatically helping people whom other psychiatrists had all but given up on. They were built up in the Word of God. They were nurtured in health in the Word. That's what happened when one man decided to share the Word in a way that it hadn't been shared before. Friends, there's abundant evidence today that you can get more from the Bible, much, much more. There are specific ways that the Bible can truly become a creative force inside us. Do you want more? Do you want this very book to move and inspire you? Well, let's recap our five suggestions. First, find a translation that speaks your language. Second, find the time when you're most creative. And then thirdly, visualize the word. Fourthly, express the word. Fifth, share the word. And remember, if you find something you just don't understand, that's good. Maybe you'll learn something. Pray about it. Talk with others about it. Wait for a good answer. Try the answer out and see if it works. Don't be afraid of perplexity. It's often the road to enlightenment. You're dealing with God's creative word. Don't expect everything to just drop into your lap. It's an experience. It's an adventure. The word will definitely take you places you've never been before. Here's the writer of Hebrews on how the word does that. It's found in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's a pretty vivid picture. You understand why the words of Scripture are not just nice words on a page. They're ready to jump out any second. They slip into our innermost thoughts. They shed light on our hidden motives and secret dreams. One woman's friends noticed that she'd suddenly become captivated by the Bible and seemed to be reading it all the time. They asked her why. She replied, there are plenty of other books I could read, but only one that reads me. This is the creative word of God. If you want more, there's plenty more. There's a new creation waiting there. There's love, joy and peace waiting there. There's all that God can speak into being waiting there. I invite you to make this book something you pursue, something you commit yourself to studying. I invite you to make a time and a place for this book. Visualize the word, express the word, share the word, your own personal discoveries are hidden in these pages.
Let's make the Word of God more personal in our lives, starting right now. I'm not calling you to some shallow, emotional, superficial Christian experience. There's a lot of that in the religious world today. I'm calling you to something deep. I'm inviting you to take time opening God's book and praying that God will reveal Himself to you in this book, that God will satisfy the deepest needs of the human heart, that God will speak to you within. Why not make that decision, a decision to open God's book and let Him speak to you right now as we pray. Dear Father, thank you for giving us the riches of your word. Thank you for putting so much wisdom there. Thank you for including each one of us in its timeless message. Please help us now to begin a relationship with the Word that you continue to speak. Please speak it to our hearts. Please speak it to our minds. Help us to grow as we open ourselves to its truths. Help us to build our lives on the solid rock of this eternal Word. In the name of Jesus Christ we ask it. Amen. This week, let God's creative word create a new joy in your heart. Until next time, remember, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God.